Holy Spirit to take us into a place of worship. Let's go to Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 46 through 52. Amen. I'm going to be reading from our Amplified, my Amplified version. Verse 46 says, And then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho, his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar, Barnabas, the son of Tobias, was sitting by the road, as was his custom. And when Barnabas heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, the Messiah, have mercy on me. Many sternly rebuked him, telling him to keep still and to be quiet. But he kept shouting out all the more, Son of David, Messiah, have mercy on me. Verse 49 says that Jesus stopped and said, Call him. Hallelujah. And he went forth and called him on Jesus even all the more. And so they called the blind man, telling him to take courage and get up. He is calling for you. And throwing his cloak aside, he jumped up and he came to Jesus. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? That's a question that's still being asked to this very day. What would you have me to do to you? And the blind man said to him, Rabboni. Oh, I just love that when he says Rabboni. Meaning, master, teacher, let me regain my sight. Jesus said to him, go, notice what he said in another line, your faith. He said, your confidence and your trust in my power have made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and began following Jesus on the road, or your Bible, the King James Version may say, or in the way. Barnabas went from a position of blindness to a position of worship and faith and following after Jesus. While he had no physical blindness, his spiritual eyesight, or rather while he had physical blindness, his spiritual insight took him to a place of worship and faith and following Jesus. We were told by Mark in this chapter that there's a couple of things that we should know about blind Bartimaeus. Number one, that he was the son of Tobias. Number two, that he was blind. Nobody knows how long he was blind, but that he was blind. And that he was a beggar. And Mark tells us that Jesus was going out to Jericho. And then Luke tells us that he was coming near to Jericho. Now that's all we need is for the Bible critics to get a hold of that and say, see that? The Bible just contradicts itself. Mark says that he was going out, and Luke says that he was coming into Jericho. Which one is it? Because we say that the Bible has contradictions in itself. But there was an archaeological excavation going on in Jerusalem that revealed that there were two Jerichos. There was the upper and there was the lower city of Jericho. Now, the upper city that was being uncovered was a city of luxury. And Harry had made himself a beautiful palace that, that he built there because the winter months was just so mild. And he had a nice pool. He had a nice uh, gymnasium. He had a private country club there, if you will. It was just a luxurious place, hallelujah, that he built only for the elite, and he built it for the high class. Tell somebody, you know he wasn't invited there. Ah, uh, wouldn't none of us invite somebody there. But then there was the lower Jericho, built for the common people, the regular people, that's just us, the everyday people. This is who Jesus hung around. These, these were the regular people, hallelujah. Most of them was like us today. We don't have the fancy pools and we don't have the gyms at home. They had Jesus, hallelujah, and when they had Jesus, they also had his promise. Now, John, the 14th chapter, and verse 2 says this. This is the promise that they had from the Lord. That in my Father's house are many mansions, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Tell somebody who's rich and the famous don't have to invite me to their mansion. Oh, but I got a mansion in the sky waiting for me. Oh, hallelujah. And the word of God says, and I go to prepare a place for you, and where I am, ye may be also. Now, that's the promise word from the Lord. How many believe it? Amen. And Jesus was passing through the lower Jericho, near the upper Jericho, where Barnabas was sitting by the roadside. And he was sitting there begging and asking for arms from the people. And as the people passed by to the elite place, as they passed by to the upper city of Jericho, and there was a great multitude of people who was traveling with Jesus. And as they followed him, this great multitude of people, he was teaching about the kingdom principles. He was giving them the promise of God's word. And blind Bartimaeus, hearing the crowd, started asking, what's all this multitude all about? What, what, what's all these people that are walking all about? What's these footsteps that I hear? Hallelujah. He can hear the people talking and he can hear the people walking by. And so he asked, what's all this going on? What's all this multitude about? And they told him that Jesus was passing by. And when he heard it, he began to call out, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Now that just sounds like a good mother to me. Hallelujah. Just like John, like, like blind Bartimaeus, in a situation of good mother, would begin to cry out to the Lord as never before. Lord, have mercy on me. For whatever situation that was. Now we can see what Barnabas was calling out. Let's look at that. What was Barnabas calling out when he said, son of David? Well, the son of David was a messianic title. Yeah. And according to the old prophets, there was to be a seed of David. Yeah. One that would sit upon the throne forever. And that was God's promise to David. And then there was the various prophecies that would arise out of the stem of Jesse. And Isaiah said that he would sit on the throne of his father, David. And the son of David became a, a common term for the Messiah. And everybody got a hold to it. Everybody was saying the son of David because it was just becoming a common term to use because of the prophecies that were given. And so Barnabas was acknowledging Jesus as the Messiah because the prophecy said that this world would be turned over to him and Barnabas knew that. He knew of the stories that were being told all over the land. How he was uh, going to do marvelous things talking about Jesus. And so he knew from the stories that he heard how that the lame would walk. He knew of the stories that he heard how the deaf would hear, but he also heard of the story how the blind would see. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Barnabas knew, blind Barnabas knew, uh, Barnabas knew that this was his time. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in a place when you felt like this was your time? You can feel it. You can almost taste it. Hallelujah. And your, your, your spirit is bearing witness to it. You know that this is your time because you believe that God has something greater for you. Yeah. You believe that God has something better for you. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise and you Lord. know that where you are, you just cannot stay in that place anymore. So this was a wonderful opportunity for Barnabas. Barnabas was filled with the word of God. He may have had physical blindness, but his spiritual insight was powerful. But nothing wrong with his spiritual insight. Glory to God. And being in that condition and having heard of Jesus and his power to open the blind eyes was predicted of the Messiah, the son of David, he began to cry out. He said, son of David, have mercy on me. And as he began to cry this out, the crowd is beginning to say, Father, man, just shut up. 
Just shut up. We've we been hearing about revival all week long. Hallelujah. And you're just making all this noise. Listen, you're always bathing. You, you, you get that bath from Jesus too. Hallelujah. Always begging. Y'all know y'all can't stand no beggars, right? Hallelujah. Just ask me and I'll give you some. Don't be begging all the time. Glory to God. But this time wasn't about material things for Barnabas. This time was about worship. This time was about faith. This time was about giving God glory. See, sometimes you reach a place in your life where you know I'm not staying here anymore. I don't care who trying to discourage me. I don't care who's saying what. I don't care if they support me. I don't care if they don't know my name. I don't care what they do. Hallelujah. I know that this is an opportunity of a lifetime in Jesus is passing by. Yeah. Huh? When it be in his presence, he's passing by. Thank you. When you're But the first thing, this is what I want you to see, that the first 
first thing he did was to acknowledge Jesus, listen, as the son of David. Yeah. He acknowledged him as God. He worshipped him. He needed a blessing. He needed a miracle, but he worshipped him first. But they that seek the Father must worship him in what? Spirit and their truth. To him that sit on the throne of God be glory and honor and majesty. Hallelujah. God already knows what you need, glory to God. But he wants you to worship him. And I pull on every spirit in this place this morning, hallelujah, that we would pull and begin to worship the Lord as never before, glory to God. Because God already knows what you need, but he wants you to worship him. And when we stand before him, there is a posture that you should not, hallelujah, take for granted. There is a posture that we all need to have, hallelujah, that we all need to assume, hallelujah, because when we in the presence of the Lord, he demands a command performance. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. He demands a command performance. Hallelujah. And sometimes we ought to uh, walk in that shift. We ought to walk in that shift of praise when we feel the Lord shifting and the Lord moving us. We ought to walk in that shift when he demands that command performance and begin to say he's king of kings. And he's Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Verse 49 says that Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind men, saying unto him, They said, Be of good cheer. Rise, because he's calling you. Yeah. You gotta see this image right here. His heart was filled with anticipation. And the word of God said he threw the cloak over. The very ones that tried to stop him, look at that. The very ones that tried to stop him, Jesus caused their heart to turn, and they were the very ones who helped him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Because the heart of every man is in the hands of the Lord, and he'll turn it every way he will. He will make your enemies your footstool. Glory to God. But you got to keep on loving. You got to keep on praying. Hallelujah. The garment was a covering that represented the blind. Just like a walking cane, when we see that walking cane, it represents the blind. But the Bible says he threw it away, and when he threw it away, that was a mark of faith. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. He says, I don't need anything more. Hallelujah. All I want is my sight. And this is the situation that we have right now. Hallelujah. That if we put Jesus over everything. Hallelujah. And know that he is calling us. Hallelujah. He will answer all of your prayers. The Bible says that he calls us out of darkness and to his marvelous light. He calls us when we move out of the dark places to toss our garments just as well. We toss the garments of lies and we toss the garments of gossip and we toss the garments of unbelief and we toss the garments of being lukewarm. We just want to toss it all out because we want to begin to move in the place of faith. Somebody say glory to God. Because we're moving from darkness into light. So we're tossing everything that's keeping us blind, hallelujah. Tossing the garment was a demonstration of faith. It was a demonstration of faith because Jesus said that thy faith has made you whole. When we make up our mind to toss all the things that keep us hindered, that keep us blind, we walk in a place of faith. The Bible says that blind Bartimaeus' faith is what made him whole. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11 and verse 6 says that without faith, it is impossible to do what? Please God. To please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. But we have to diligently seek the Lord. We have to put faith first and things second. Hallelujah. And he walked away with his healing and he walked away being made whole because he put his 
his favors. There is something about seeing Jesus. Hallelujah. There's something about seeing Jesus that makes this thing all right. There's something about seeing him. There's something about being in his presence that will make you worship him. There's something about being in his presence that make you just want to give a symphony. When we look at Mark, the fifth chapter and verse six, is we're talking about getting away from all of the blind things in our life and moving into a place of worship. I love this verse in Mark, the fifth chapter. Here is where the demoniac man begins to worship the Lord. And verse 6 says, And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and bowed to him, and rather ran and bowed and worshiped before him. Yeah. Now, I love that. And when I read that, I almost couldn't get past that almost couldn't get past the point that says, and he saw. Almost couldn't get past that part, and he saw. He gave this demonic, demoniac man, gave God glory, because the Bible lets us know that he saw. Hallelujah. He saw Jesus, and when he saw Jesus, he began to give him glory. There's something about seeing Jesus that makes you stand and give him glory. He might have been crazy glory to God, but he gave him glory because he saw him. He might have been suicidal and out of his mind, but he gave him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know where all of our minds are in this place, but wherever our minds are, it doesn't matter what you have on it. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't what you have been, hallelujah. All that matters is, can you see Jesus? Hallelujah. When you see him, it makes you want to give a praise, hallelujah. Isaiah said that I saw him, and when I saw him, I saw him high, and I saw him lifted up. He said it was in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord high and lifted up. He said, and all of the angels shouted, glory, glory, glory.
This train fills the temple. Glory to God. This train fills the temple. Hallelujah. And we got to give him the glory. Hallelujah. Because he's opening all of our eyes this morning. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Can you see him high and lifted up? And see his train fill the temple. Hallelujah. Let's give him the glory this morning. Let's do him. Give him the praise. Let's do him. Give him the honor. Let's do him. Take another look, another look, another look. Come on, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Take another look. Hallelujah. Take another look. Thank you, Jesus. Take another look at the Lord this morning. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When you look and you see him high, you see him mighty, you see him as a strong deliverer. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you see him? Can you see him when you look? Can you see him when you look? Can you see him when you look? Let's stand together. Can you see him? Hallelujah. Can you see him? Bless the name of Jesus. Take another look at him. Can you see him? Hallelujah, glory to God. We look at Jesus. We don't look at the preacher. We don't look at your prayer partner. We don't look at the church. We look to Jesus. See, the money man had the answer. And the answer was that when you're in the presence of the Lord, see, we Take it out of the 